time I do this, I question every single life decision I've ever made and I don't think this weekend is going to be any different. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Mel and today I bring you guys an extreme 24 hour reading challenge. Uh, why did I try and be so epic? I'm not epic, I'm boring. However, as you guys know, I've made it a tradition out of myself. Every once in a while, I attempt to read for 24 hours without sleeping, pushing myself and reading a certain amount of books, again, for as long as I can, trying to finish all of them in the amount of time that is 24 hours. Now the reason why I'm going as extreme as not sleeping is because because I actually want to push myself this time. I want this to be a challenge. I'm amped up and I have a TBR that I think will make the next 24 hours incredibly interesting. Now, if you've been here for a while, then you'd know that I personally am the type of person that introduces their entire TBR at the start of the video. However, for today, you guys won't know what I'm reading for the next 24 hours up until I'm reading it. And the first book I'm gonna start out with is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I have no idea what this book is about, but we're gonna read it within these 24 hours and we're gonna see what we think Think of Miss Rooney's newest book. Some of you would ask, Mel, why are you doing this to yourself? And it's because I'm a masochist. Let us get started. It's about to hit seven o'clock and we're about to start reading. Oh my God, it doesn't have quotation marks. Yeah! How does she expect me to know when they're talking? You guys, I'm sitting here and I have answers. How is this a, you see that? That is a whole paragraph. How is this a whole paragraph? Miss Sally Rooney and her sentence structure is just somewhere within the fucked up realm. How is this a whole paragraph? You see that? You see that? Sexy sprinters, hello. Somebody make the smut in this book exit the chat, please and thank you. Who told Sally Rooney this was acceptable? More like atrocious. What is happening in this book that is disgusting. You know what the worst thing is? Listening to Sally Rooney smut and then being sent this. How am I supposed to function like a normal person? Oh, it's already nauseous. This is disgusting. Good. Ow, that hurt. Beautiful world, where are you? More like atrocious world, you're here. What is this book, you guys? See, every time I give an author the benefit of the doubt and I go, ah, maybe they'll surprise me, maybe it'll be good. I cannot make this up. I, you cannot make this up. And Sally Rooney writing smut, not it. The amount of words I have read, fingered, come, and everything in between. I want to erase this. I want to obliterate this out of my head. Beautiful world, where are you? Might just be the book that is quite literally no plot, just vibes. Literally one of you commented that on my 22 books to read in 2022. That's what I'm trying to say. And you were so right. You were so right. I am literally 147 pages in. If I could attempt to tell you what this book is about beyond the exploration of sex, friendships, and trying to find something significant in everyday life, I couldn't because that's all that the book is. But the bottom line is I am uncomfortable. Every time any important subject matter comes up, sexuality, embracing your sexuality, marginalization, economic status, classism, everything in between, she finds some verbiage to include in her sentences to make me feel uncomfortable. Not only that, all of these 20 year old grown adults at this point, or somewhat adults behave so childishly and this is what bugs me it's like is is this what she views young adults like and every time she's inching towards a really interesting remark it is all blown away by lack of development so let's go read that i'm currently sprinting with my patreons here we go sally rooney <laughs> What the heck did I just 
just read. Sally Rooney is hands down the most clinical, emotionless writer I have ever read from. I am just, here's my thing, you guys. <laughs> this is literally just Sally Rooney screaming into the void with a megaphone, just making sure that everybody understands her political views, which I mean, it's fine. Like books often tend to be political statements. There's nothing wrong with that. That is not what I signed up for. And here's my thing. If there was any actual development in this book, it'd be 10 times better than it ended up being. Not only do you have Simon and Eileen's dynamic, which is incredibly interesting. The fact that this man goes, oh yeah, there's this girl who constantly leads me on and then pretends to not be into me and then asks me questions just to make sure that I'm still interested. That is toxic as hell and the fact that nobody acknowledges that in the book. I don't know if the characters have rationalized it at that point or if Sally Rooney just doesn't want to address it, but I'm just like in awe of the lack of context for so many things in this book. You want to know what was more interesting in this book? Eileen's dynamic with her parents, with her mother in particular and her sister. You know what was more interesting in this book? Alice is struggle with mental health. However, you know what happened in this book? No development in any of those regards. And I was just so mad because the most interesting elements of this book were not even present for the majority of it. Instead, we get a deep exploration of relationships and friendships in the most shallow of ways. Felix was quite literally unbearable of a character. And at this point also, this book was so religious out of nowhere that I'm not even, what? Like, was Felix supposed to be the devil and Simon the god? Like, I, I just, what parallels are we trying to draw here because I was not into any of them. I definitely do think that in regards to making a statement, Sally Rooney is good, which is why I will go on a limb here and say if this book would have been nonfiction and just a collection of essays on a million different topics, it would have been a heavily different story because at the end of the day, with the sentence structure, you guys, look at this. I just need you guys to understand the fact that this is all the same paragraph. I did not sign up to read an essay, Miss Rooney. I think I'm gonna be starting my body by Emily Radoshkowski. So I'm gonna start this. I also have the audiobook on deck. I think the audiobook like sped up is like two and a half hours. So I think it'll be a good one. I will also not take a break to play Among Us with my patrons because I wanna play some Among Us. I haven't played in such a long time. I'll quit if this is bad. Like honestly, if this book is not it, I will quit reading. I will never read again. How much would you hate me if I actually took a nap? And I don't think I can stay awake for that much longer. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put an alarm for 5.30 and I'm gonna wake up and then I'm gonna keep on reading. 5.30 in the morning, that's the alarm. I am going to sleep right here on the couch and I'll see you guys at 5.30. I hope I don't oversleep because I also have a tendency to do that. I slept for more than I intended to. I don't know what to do with myself because it's 7.06 a.m. I've been reading My Body by Emily Radoshkowski and I am 153 pages in. And I have to say, this book is surprising me a lot in a lot of different ways. I thought I was gonna cry and I haven't cried yet. And also her writing is actually really, really good. Not that I doubted anybody's ability to write. However, when it comes to nonfiction, I'm always kind of iffy about how the writing is gonna come across. And so this is basically an exploration of a variety of different themes that Emily has not managed to fully address in the media. And she felt that in order for her to understand her own feelings about her body, how her body is portrayed in the media, and the experiences she has gone through as a model, as an actress, as somebody who has made their body their brand. And it's incredibly insightful and it's actually really interesting to see it from this perspective. I think we see so many people on social media putting themselves front and center, literally in the front lines, and their brands being their bodies, their aesthetic, how they look. And I think it's always been very fascinating to me as to what goes on in people's 
people's heads when that is the case. What people kind of think of themselves and what they're doing because it, it's a very hard industry. If anything is critiqued, it's directly a personal attack of who they think you are and what you look like. And on the mental health aspect of it, which is very clearly detailed in this book, you get to see the effects of that on someone. And that part of this book, I am really enjoying. I will go on to say though, and there seems to be something fundamentally wrong with the idea of critiquing a nonfiction book, whatever the genre, whatever the subject matter is, because it's almost like invalidating somebody else's experiences in writing, which is not at all what this is. That being said though, I think the one element that this book is missing, and again, I am really enjoying it, is a deeper conversation about beauty standards within just society in general, and not necessarily from the scope of the modeling acting industry and how that affects people everywhere and also how that affects mental health and how that just perpetuates issues like body dysmorphia and eating disorders onto people out there and that part because it seems to be so intrinsically connected with this industry the media it would have been a really interesting exploration i'm gonna go sip on my coffee and finish this book you guys ending of this book was like single-handedly the most stunning part or one of the most stunning parts of it sitting here and just like letting it sink in and I just want to cry all over again um <laughs> let me set you all down so I can like properly talk to you as I update you on the last few bits of this book but oh my god I am sad boy hours literally the very end of this book Book. I felt him, his body on my chest, more acutely his presence in the room. In a daze, I held him to me. Of my flesh, I thought. The mirror was pushed to the side, but I could still see the place where he emerged. My body. That was the most perfect way to end this book. And I just, it's like, it makes me eat the words that I said previous to this. Also, grab the dust jacket, but makes me eat my words previous to this. It's like, yes, while it could have done more, I think it did what it had to do. And the explorations of like body image and mental health and motherhood and being abused in this industry. I loved every second of it and her calling Steven out just made this book like 10 times better. I was over here just like chanting and going, yes, just do it, yes. I don't tend to rate nonfiction unless it evokes a strong feeling for me. Like unless a nonfiction is like a five star, I don't rate it because I feel bad. I, again, there's just something kind of like fundamentally wrong, I guess, about judging people's experiences like that, but uh, this book is a it's a five star it's a it's really good it's the first five star of the year too i am so happy i read this book got to hate being horribly backlit let's just uh so much better wow i think i'm going to start crescent city now here's also ignore oh my god that's horrible mel why are you showing people i did some laundry yesterday and i washed my bed sheets and i still have yet to make my bed to uh they're uh <laughs> definitely However, I really want to squeeze in a reread of Crescent City before... I say Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood. Same shit, different fucking toilet. Point is, I really want to squeeze in a reread of this before the second book comes out. And so I bought a paperback and this is definitely influenced by Liv, who's always like, oh my God, Mel, spend your money, buy a book. And I'm like, of course I will. <laughs> and so I bought the paperback and I'm excited to just like re-annotate this and like re-experience this for the, <laughs> for the third time. But it's fine. We're doing fantastic. So I'm going to sit down, start this. And I guess update you guys as I go, even though I have a full vlog in Crescent City. This is kind of pointless. I'm so excited. It's the way that chaos reigns supreme over on these streets. I cannot. So my patrons and I are trying to watch Encanto and the way that Teleparty is not letting us create a party that actually works. <laughs> 
this chat is chaotic, but it doesn't got that so exciting! Oh my god! Oh, you guys! You guys! You guys! Crescent City is going incredibly well, and I am how much into it? I am 162 pages into Crescent City. I'm trying to figure out what to say. I will be leaving my Crescent City vlog linked down below in case you guys want to watch that. What I think I will add to the Crescent City conversation is that this book and every SJM book for that matter has just such high reread quality. Every time I reread one SJM book, I just keep discovering more and more. Specifically, these books are not only incredibly easy to read and you just, you know, you're so in love with the characters, or at least I am, that it just flies by, but it also is a really nice refresh for whatever's to follow, and it's really great for crafting theories, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm having the best time. This book just continues to break my heart in every regard, and it just keeps me hooked on every regard. And I think what is so interesting about this landscape in particular out of every SJM series, it is so unlike what she's done before because everything else has been set in like this mystical, magical land, whereas this feels so much closer to what we already have today in society, but with further technological advances, if that makes sense. And then you throw in angels and fays and demons and werewolves and vampires and all that good stuff. And I like the fact that it's like a well-rounded society, if you want to call it that, where there is a bunch of everything. There's not just fey, which I personally really like because it provides a lot more world building and a lot more dynamism. That's not a word, dynamics. <laughs> I was thinking of dinamismo in Spanish. Characters and species, if you will. And also because the, the world is divided into different houses where each house contains a certain amount of creatures. Again, it also lends itself for such interesting exploration of what all of these are. So I personally love the world of Crescent City, which is why I'm rereading it for a third time. And I just love Hunt and I love Bryce and I love Danica and Connor and Lehaba. I love just everything about this and the characters and of course I'm again I'm familiar with it so I'm like how much do I say and obviously I think most of my thoughts right now are more centered around the reread quality of it and spoilers that I can't just bring myself to say a lot but again I will reference that vlog linked down below and also I think I've been in like such a big fantasy reading slump. I mean, am I in a fantasy reading slump or am I just just not in the mood to read? I think I've been in a fantasy reading slump. I think, I don't know if I'd call it like a massive one, but I've been slightly in a fantasy reading slump. And I think starting out the year with this as the first fantasy I'll finish is the right choice because I felt like I've started every year for the past couple of years reading an SJM book as my first fantasy of the year. So it only feels fitting to have done this again, more so in preparation for the second one. And look at this, it's sexy. Let's let me skedaddle, two sprints, and I'll talk to you guys later. I have a few cool unboxings for y'all. So let me go do that. I love y'all. Goodbye. I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> I'm tired. I need sleep. Should I just turn this into a 48-hour readathon? I always do this. I mean, I'm doing a 48-hour readathon anyway. I think the answer is gonna be yes. Just because I cannot even, I can't even compute right now. <laughs> you better not have thought that I was asleep. This is a 24 hour readathon. We don't sleep in this household. That's a lie. We're about to experience the coolest unboxing I've probably ever done in my channel. This is crazy. You guys, I know this is so random and I know this is probably the last thing you'd expect me to unbox, but when I got this email, I was just too excited, one, and two, flabbergasted at the same time that I'd received this email. And that is an unboxing from Teddy Blake, which is a designer brand. Like what in the world? It literally comes in this massive wide box and I was so confused for a second when this got here because I was like, I have not ordered anything this big. So if you guys are not familiar with Teddy Blake, let me give you just a little bit of a rundown as to what this brand is, where it came from, and how it came to be, and what I've come to find out ever since they've reached out to me. So this is an Italian designer brand. It has got a team of full Italian designers pitched from luxury brands, and they're the ones taking care of 
every single design, making sure that you literally can get at some point the bag of your dreams. And the cool thing is that it's A, way more inexpensive than the typical luxury brands that you'd see. A purse is not going to be a thousand or two thousand dollars. Take away the extra zeros. And it's full authentic Italian leather, which again, if you're in the business of getting yourself a designer purse, it's probably as good as it's going to get. So yes, it's pretty cool. It's literally made in Italy. It's made in the same factories as some of the luxury brands that you know and I know. So again, it's pretty cool that this is a thing. And let us open this and see what is in here. And so it obviously comes in the cute little pouches. And the first thing that we have here is the dark green Morocco strap. And so to accompany this, I got this. I'm like, I'm still flabbergasted at the fact that this is here. It's stunning. It's like small. It's like the perfect size. And this is, I believe, the nine inch bag. But I know this is like super random. I just thought I'd share this moment of victory with you guys because again, it's the most random but rewarding thing ever. Thank you to Teddy Blake for sending that my way. Pretty freaking cool. Great. Back to the video. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I'm trying to decipher an angle for us today. Oh my God. I failed you guys. I mean, by every intent and purpose, it's 7.45 a.m. I slept the whole night. I, in fact, slept for like, what, 12 hours? So, I don't know what to say at this point. All I know is that I'm gonna read all day today and hopefully finish Crescent City. Like, literally, my only plan today is to get through Crescent City. If I finish it, fantastic. And if I don't, well, fuck me, I guess. I have Citadel Sprint in literally an hour and 15 minutes. So, I'm excited. It's time to make our morning smoothie. Oh, I'm gonna be able to read before a sprint. <laughs> a concept. <laughs> Look at this baby. She a whole baby. What? Oh, she left. I am terrified. Hello. So one of my patrons, actually several of my patrons, convinced me to order matcha latte. And I don't know if this is gonna be good. I'm so scared. Do I stir this? Do I not stir this? I'm stirring it. I'm so scared. I know people hate matcha. What happens if it's bad? Oh no. I have a horrible gag reflex. Probably not put that on the internet, but I am. I think I hate this. At least I had some semblance of common sense and I ordered myself a quaxin. Now we're talking and it's all I'm saying and look how cute. It took on mucho amor to make with lots of love and it's sexy because most of the time it already comes here all combined. But today I get to do this. But I made it to 50% of Crescent City and it's going extremely well. Were it not for this reread, I would probably be confused walking into the second book when it comes out. I'm extremely thankful that I'm doing this and that I'm loving it just as much. I've missed Miss SJ. Oh my god. <laughs> Did I fail? It's Monday. <laughs> I still haven't finished Crescent City. I still have not finished this. And to be fair, to be quite fair, I am 613 pages in, which means that I only have like 170 pages left. So like, it's not that bad. And we're gonna finish it right now. Sarah Day Mas on the internet, you read what the J stands for, please. Yeah. Fucking Sarah Dan it. Did anybody say Crescent City? Hello? I finished this and my heart is thoroughly broken in a way that I don't know what I'm going to do with myself now. I obviously gave this five stars again. I was like, I'm not gonna rate this because I've already read this twice, but this book still remains a five star. Like it's so good. It makes me emotional every time. And what I love about this book is the message of you don't need to have powers to be special, nor do you need to exemplify any order of extraordinary ability in order to make a change. 
change. And I also love how this book ends up being first and foremost an exploration of grief and PTSD and loss and depression and anxiety and all of those things mixed into one. I always have said this, but I love how SJM explores mental health. I think it's so very close to things that I've experienced in the past and things that I just feel very deeply in my soul. And so I feel like this was the perfect fantasy book to start out the year with. And it truly has kickstarted me and put me in the best mood to keep reading fantasy. So finished it, not in 24 hours or 48 hours, but I did in 72. I mean, it didn't take a full 72 hours. If I add up the amount of hours that I actually read for this weekend, I think I get a total of like either 24 or actually yeah 24 if i take away all of the eating breaks movie breaks sprinting breaks and all that i think it might just add up to 24 but yes you guys that was january's 24 hour readathon i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up down below and if you participated in the readathon also let a girl know what you ended up reading how you liked it what you rated it if you read any of the books that i read in this video also let a girl know down in the comments so that we can talk it out and also if you reach the end of the video let's leave some clock emojis down below. Feels very fitting for a 24-hour readathon vlog. 48 hour. This is just whiplash in my brain. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I am constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss. And if you do want to support the channel further, again, my Patreon is always linked down below alongside all of my social medias. And yes, I love you guys so, so much, and I shall see you on the next one. Bye, guys.